I'm back. Hey, I uh, don't have any hair anymore, but uh, did one of these 13 years ago, did one eight years ago. Thought we'd little jump through the future here and just catch up to where we are at with where video editing software is and what are the best ones for your needs. So let's just get started with whether you're an aspiring filmmaker, a content creator, or a seasoned editor, choosing the right video editing software is really important for you. And it's all gonna be based on, are you working at a higher level a lower level, which is completely normal. You're gonna be starting out as a beginner and where you wanna go within that range from low to high. You wanna start out low to build yourself up in your career. Are you building towards more of a freelance editor? Or are you building more towards working on other things? I will always say any kind of job, there are tons of tools to do. Same thing for video editing. So video editing software is just a tool. There are tons of them now. There are the main big players we'll go over. There are tons of other little ones. No matter which one you're gonna use, the goal is always going to be the same. And you shouldn't let that scare you. You should just pick the tool, go with it, learn it, whichever one you go with and keep growing. And you might get to another one at another time, but just pick the tool, the software, and go with it. Start editing so you can keep growing. All right, let's get started. First up, Adobe Premiere Pro, a powerhouse in the video editing world. It's widely used in the film and TV industry for its flexibility and extensive tool set. Yes, it's gonna be in Hollywood. Yes, it's gonna be in broadcast TV. Where I really see this one is really working in for freelancers who are not out in Hollywood, not out on some off of big projects, but who are doing a lot of freelance work at home. I don't wanna to get too much into that in this video, but that's where I see that one. One of the biggest positives for me is Premiere Pro can be used on a Mac or PC. That's always gonna be the first question we come up with and we ask, are we using a Mac or PC? Well, perfect answer for Premiere, you could be working on a Mac or a PC at home or you could have both. So you could be switching projects and jumping back and forth as long as the computers you have can handle the program. Another big positive, once you're in that Adobe ecosystem, really using things like After Effects Photoshop, pulling it into your video edits, that's another big thing that's really gonna help you. So starting at Premiere is a great way to grow as you're looking towards going to a future of what you wanna do. You know, another big positive is once you're paying, and we're gonna get into what it is, subscription model and all that kind of stuff, but once you're paying, you're getting all your updates for free. So Adobe's constantly updating, you know, wherever they're at, they're gonna keep updating out 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 throughout the year. So you're always gonna get your updates and you can just take anything, video, iPhone, whatever format you're shooting, 24P, and you can just throw anything at the timeline in Premiere Pro and put it together and mash it together. You're gonna put it on the timeline. It's gonna ask you to, whether you build that new sequence off of that one, but any other footage you put in with it, difference in uh, frame rates, it's all gonna make it work together, which is always gonna be a huge positive for Premiere Pro. If you're a beginner, here's gonna be one of the big negatives for a couple of these first ones. It's going to be a learning curve. So you're a video editor or an aspiring video editor, and you've already used some of the smaller products out there for software editing, and you wanna jump up to Premiere Pro, that's great. It is a beefy program in the sense that you do need to run it a very good computer, a computer that has the right graphics, the right internal RAM. So making sure you're following the recommendations of what computer you have before you go and get this is another big, I'll say negative, but something you need to pay attention to. The other big thing is, is Premiere Pro is going to be subscription-based pricing, which does get costly over time. I'll give you an idea here, but just for Adobe Premiere Pro, it's $22.99 a month. If you want to use other things like Photoshop, After Effects, Illustrator, things like that, you're going to want to go to Creative Cloud, and that's $59.99 a month. I always like to leave as a caveat as a student you do get a discount um, the first year you get creative cloud at $19.99 a month after a year that jumps to $34.99 a month but that's still a great deal if you're a student and you're trying to learn and you can take that even if you're not a student a little trick I always used to use is if you know somebody who is a student or maybe you have a relative that is and you can put your subscription through their name so that's just something to keep in mind on as we look at Adobe Premiere Pro Next, let's go to DaVinci Resolve, a favorite for those who love precise color grading but don't want to compromise on editing or audio tools. Yes, DaVinci is known for its great color grading. We're going to start off with the free version. It's a free software. It's robust. It has a lot of features. It is going to be a tougher learn for some people because it's not normally what we're used to in the sense that I feel like you can jump from a smaller program to something like Premiere a little bit quicker. DaVinci, it's just a mouse clicking different key codes are gonna be different and they don't have an easy way to jump back to that. Premiere did an awesome thing when they first were trying to get 
like people after Final Cut, the original Final Cut went down and they had the key settings of Final Cut Pro saved in them. DaVinci doesn't have something like that, so you really have to learn some key codes and mouse clicks in different uh, areas again. It is gonna be a steep learning curve because it's advanced features and just the different layout it has. Again, whether you're Mac or PC, you gotta have a computer that can run this one. Once you wanna upgrade out of that free version, it is going to cost money. If this possibly should be in the free section, which I'm gonna have later on, wait for the free section, because it does come free, but like we said, it's gonna cost some money down the line if you wanna upgrade. To give you other tools like the color grading panels, all the extra effects it can do, and stuff like that. So free at first, but if you wanna go in there and buy the studio version, it is $2.95, and that's a one-time fee, which is good. So $2.95, one-time fee, you get all the updates. And you know, really what Blackmagic Thanks when they have DaVinci Resolve and they have it for free and then they have the studio for $2.95. They're just trying to get you in the Blackmagic family so then you will keep buying more from them. And I don't mean that in a negative way, smart business way. Get people in, get people using it. All right, let's go to the next one. Another big name, Avid. Avid Media Composer, one I used years ago when I first started my career, one I use later on in my career, and one whenever I'm called for a job might be something that I'm asked to cut on. And I'm still very capable in it. It's all about the tools. Once you learn that tool, you kind of, your muscle memory goes back to it. So I can go jump on an Avid Media Composer and I can cut right away. And when I'm talking about the way that I used it, I used it more for broadcast, for news, for projects that were shared together. And that's really where Avid shines in that, that shared environment where one editor can be working on the same thing as another editor. Obviously that's a lot bigger than what most people watching this are gonna be doing and thinking about. So that's why I want you to keep that in mind. That's really Avid's caveat. If you, you are working in a group of editors, it's great. Again, that one's gonna be a hard learning curve, but Avid Media Composer in general is just highly regarded. And why is it gonna be highly regarded? This is a system you're gonna wanna start at some point in your career. Let's just say working for another company or working, working in Hollywood because it is so well respected and it's well respected because it just organizes things so well. That goes well beyond what Media Composer does. If we're just looking at Media Composer as an editor, probably not for a day-to-day -day content creator, but once we're getting into building out, if you're ever working for a company, building out an ecosystem of video cameras and video editing, that's where really what Avid does on the other side of what they do for their workflow, organizing everything together. Media Composer, again, is just a tool for the video editing part. And the big negative that Media Composer, Avid, is just gonna have on themselves is the price point. Subscription for Avid Media Composer is $39.99 a month, or you could go for the yearly, which you still pay monthly, but for the yearly is $25.99 a month. That comes to about $312 a year. Avid does have a free version. It's very, very basic something you can just jump on, throw some clips on. I honestly would, some of the free things we're gonna talk about, I would recommend over just the free Avid version. All right, for our next one, for Mac users only, we always gotta talk about this one, Final Cut Pro X. And Final Cut Pro X offers a streamlined and powerful editing experience that's perfect for everything from indie films to YouTube content. Definitely something to use for content creators. I don't love the layout and I don't love the grabbing of box clips and pulling them places and disconnecting, understanding how to disconnect video and audio combined when you're trying to edit around. But for just starting and trying to piece together something, maybe you're shooting something in full and you're just cutting things out, it can be very useful. The magnetic timeline simplifies editing and keeps your project organized. Another great positive is it's a one-time purchase, $299.99. That's it, you got your Final Cut Pro X and you're, you're ready to go. You know, the one main negative is gonna be that it is strictly for Macs. So you have to have a Mac to use this. Now let's get to our free options. Everybody loves to hear free. This is for content creators who just wanna get started, are just getting going, and wanna get their hands on some video editing software. If you're looking for free options, here's a great alternative for both Mac and PCs. I'll give you one for both. iMovie still comes with the Mac. It's intuitive, it's user-friendly, perfect for beginners. Drag and drop functionality build-in templates, and seamless integration with Apple devices make it a solid starting point. Does have some limited features, but you need to start growing somewhere, and that's a free way to start growing. You'll figure out, watch some quick tutorials on YouTube, and make your way. And hey, they got it on the iPhone, iPad too. Go ahead, grab iMovie there. That's not the same as what we're talking about, because that might be using like your videos you shoot on those devices, but something you can try out for free. For our PC users, Lightworks offers a free version version with professional grade 
features. It supports multi-track editing, which is a huge plus because not some of these other free ones we're talking about are not gonna support multi-track, like more than one video channel. In your timeline, this will, and it works with a variety of video formats. The downside, the free version limits export resolution to 720p and has fewer advanced effects than what their paid version was. So in my point to that, it's negative, but it's also not because if you're a beginner, you don't really need effects. You need to cut quick. Now I'll just do a couple other free ones that we just don't wanna leave out, but that's Clip Champ and YouTube's video editor, both very capable editors for beginners. Go ahead, try them out, use them, get your hands dirty. My overall advice for this video will always be to pick one video editing software and go with it, go with it. Go shoot stuff, get it on your computer, get it in your video editing software, and then get it down on the timeline. That's where you're always gonna begin. That is the starting point. Go create. Each of these programs we've talked about has strengths and weaknesses. And everyone's going to have of what your beginner starting or as you're moving up your ladder and maybe moving into a career, whether it's content creator or as a professional somewhere, you're going to have different things that you want and what the software offers you. The best choice is going to depend on your needs, your experience, and your budget. Whether you're diving into Hollywood level edits or crafting content for the web, there's a tool out there for you. The simple thing here, as I said a few seconds, ago just go at it just go get on your computer start cutting away chop, chop. Chop. and for me all i ask is you like subscribe and share this video so i can create more content creation tips for you i am michael hickey the tv production guy and i am saying just be happy